Um, I want to begin by saying that it's highly regrettable that the offer made by the Hungarian government to take part in this hearing was rejected by the organizers, rejected yesterday. I think this goes counter to the democratic principles which this hearing was actually convened to defend. I'm assuming that the woman, who you can see on the poster advertising this hearing, with a taped up mouth, represents the Hungarian government. Then I want to go on to what uh, Jörg Konrad told us about the restrictions of freedom of speech. Uh, some of you may know that a couple of years ago he described freedom of speech as the freedom of neo-fascism. I put the quotation here in German. Um, I'm also fascinated that he thinks that there's a, a coup d'etat which has taken place in Hungary, a coup d'etat by election, and then he also says it could move to dictatorship. Also, by the same token, it couldn't move to dictatorship. Who knows these things? But the way in which he uses discursivity, I think that's what he means by rhetoric, uh, is highly suggestive. Two wild former in arms, uh, Mr. Horasti, who used to be involved in the uh, democratic opposition way back in the 1980s. I find your reading of the media law highly idiosyncratic. It's a very interesting reading. A great really torture chamber. Are you serious? Come on. Not in the 21st century in Hungary. Let me go on. I have not very much time, I know. So what I want to suggest to you is this. The Hungarian media law, and I don't think any of you will dissent from this, raises a power issue. The power of politicians and the power of the media. So I'm not going to deal with the details of the media law. I think we've heard enough about that. Basically what I see as having happened is that Hungary has been buried under a media avalanche, an events cascade, which is entirely out of control. Article after article, I've read them in a fair number of languages, simply regurgitates the same assertions. There's no attempt to check whether or not it's reliable. The accusation of Putinization, I think that was in the Washington Post, that that is nonsense on stilts. It's ridiculous. Uh, journalism, we know, is argued as being in the public interest. Yes. The journalists cannot claim that they and they alone have the right to define what constitutes the public interest. An elected government has rights in this area, not least because it's accountable to voters. Journalists are not. The task of the media is to speak truth to power. This is something that I support completely. But in so doing, the journalists themselves exercise power. And for that power, they are not accountable to voters. They have power without responsibility. So that power must to some degree, I stress to some degree, must be regulated by the state in a variety of ways, generally through intermediate bodies and legal provisions. It's always going to be a mixture. Now, I think this is what the Hungarian media law attempts to do in a comprehensive fashion. It's a consolidatory piece of legislation, which of course does make it more vulnerable. If it had been dribbled through bit by bit, I don't think anyone would have noticed it by the same way. Um, what I want to suggest to you is that what we're seeing is this clash between the twofold exercise of power by the media and by the politicians. And what I see in this media avalanche that I've described seems to be concentrated on Hungary with the aim of getting the Hungarian government to change the media law. Now, let me suggest to you that the Hungarian media law, the avalanche, I should say about it, has been lived by much of Hungarian opinion as an onslaught on Hungary from abroad. But this is, I think, an unintended consequence of the avalanche. The second unintended consequence, very certain, is that it will strengthen Euroscepticism. It will persuade many Hungarians, I'm sorry to say, that the EU slogans of solidarity and unity diversity are empty, so certainly they don't apply to them. The third one, and this one is one that worries me most, is that it will strengthen the far right. It will give your big a boost. This is bad news for democracy. Can it really be that those who drove on the media avalanche actually got from this? I think that is a problem. A considerable number of Hungarians, and this is the double standard, find it unacceptable that the West and the Western press do not treat them as deserving equality of respect, parity of esteem. The West shows a lack of consistency and a lack of integrity as far as Hungary is concerned. I'm thinking here particularly of the way in which the Western press treated uh, the so-called lying speech by the previous Prime Minister Gyurcsány 
and the brutal dispersal of the demonstration on the 23rd of October 2006, the past can scarcely a moment. Um, don't be surprised if people resent this. Uh, they ask the question, <coughs> why is it that Hungary should be singled out in this world? You may think this is paranoia, but I think all, we're all solipsistic to some degree. Um, for many of my constituents, I think the answer is that there is an understanding, rightly or wrongly. I would suggest to you, a minute and a half, uh, that the affair is beginning to resemble the Austrian boycott. Notably in the calls, we've heard of these, that Hungary be removed from running the EU presidency. Now this is absurd to think about it. The Austrian boycott was a failure. It was launched in haste, prevented at leisure, and precisely the consequence of strengthening Euroscepticism. I don't think this is what the drivers of the avalanche actually want. My final point is about the ironic outcomes of all of this. Um, it seems to me that the left in Hungary suffered two defeats at the elections in the year 2010, has been trying to accumulate political capital. It's perfectly clear <coughs> that's what uh, politicians try to do all the time. But what it's trying to do is to revive the fortunes of the left by trying to discredit the Fidesz government, not least by painting everything that the government does in the darkest of colours, and by massively exaggerating the dangers of anti-democratic development. The Western press laughs this up. The Western press loves mythologies. The irony of this, it seems to me, is that by discrediting Hungary, they discredit themselves. So here too, the law of unintended consequences is yet again in operation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.